As nature's fire sinks into the ocean, some of us must keep a fire burning through the night, lest a complete darkness descend upon our world. On the southwestern coast of India, at a temple theater in Kerala, a performance is about to begin. Every year, a festival is held here to honor the temple deity, the goddess Bhadrakali, as she is known. But long after the sounds of the temple drums have echoed through the courtyard, and the stream of devotees has left with their prayers, in the silence of the night, a play will begin, performed with shadows and lit by flames. A troop of performers who are rice farmers during the day will be led by their old master puppeteer as they enact the story of the Ramayana, the most sacred of Hindu epics. It can take these men 21 nights to complete the play. Night after night they will return here and perform all night until dawn, one episode at a time. And they will do this even in the complete absence of any human audience outside the theater. For, as they believe, they are performing for the gods themselves. There are numerous forms of worship, many ways in which people aspire to reach the divine. My art is my form of prayer. I am Krishnan Kutti Pulavar. I practice an art which has been kept alive for many centuries before me by my ancestors. We call it Tol Pava Kutu, the play of leather shadow puppets. As far as my ancestors have told us, it is more than a thousand years old. Today, Krishnan Kuti is the last surviving Pulavar, or master of Topava Kuthu, who can preserve this art. He and his three sons form the core of their troop, one among a handful still performing. When and where Topava Kuthu began may never be known, and its origin is shrouded in legend. Once, when dharma, the moral order of the universe, was threatened, there was a ferocious demon named Darika who terrorized the good people of the earth. To subdue him, the great destroyer Lord Shiva created the goddess Padrakali out of his own body from the poison lodged in his throat. The goddess sped forth in her terrible, warlike form, surrounded by her powerful spirits to vanquish Darika. While she was engaged in combat, another great battle was being fought to preserve dharma in the universe, as told in the ancient Hindu epic, the Ramayana. There, Rama 
defeated the demon king Ravana. But Bhadrakali could not witness this momentous event. So, Shiva blessed his daughter and promised that the Ramayana story would henceforth be enacted for her viewing pleasure with shadow puppets. This is why the shadow puppet play came to be in the temples of Kerala. Along both banks of the Bharatapura River, surrounded by rice fields and sheltered by palms, more than 70 temples stand witness to the long tradition of Tolpava Khufu held annually for centuries. The Aryan Kau Temple is one of the most prestigious of these. Our theater is a small structure facing the temple of the goddess. Many generations of my family have performed here before me, paved with stones and earth. It is built to show the shadow play through the opening in the front wall on which we stretch our screen of cloth. What appears as an empty, simple hut during the day is a place of magic at night. Gods, demons and sages appear Vast battles are played out. The universe itself is summoned within its walls, dancing in the light of lamps. We worship fire. Fire is light. It is always present as a witness to sacred events. Lamps light the sanctum of the temple. The idol of the war goddess resides within. Drummers play to serenade her. Since ancient times, this drumming has been our way of announcing the puppet play. Every temple of the goddess has an oracle. He is regarded as the representative of the goddess, speaking for her on special occasions. The oracle at the Kulankara temple in Adapal is very old. I have known him for many years and we are good friends, but at night, we both assume our ceremonial functions. He puts on his ornaments, blessed by the priest, and assumes his duties. On the first night of the play, he brings me a flame from the inner sanctum of the temple. Led by drummers, he approaches the shadow theater and gives his blessings to the performance. With his formal permission, the puppet play may begin in the honor of the goddess. I receive this flame, and with it, we light the row of lamps in our shadow theater. Fire borrowed from the goddess herself brings the shadows to life. With this fire, 
we believe, she witnesses the shadow play as long as the lamps are lit. For many nights after this, this shadow theater will be home to our troop of puppeteers, for it can take us 21 nights to enact the play from beginning to end, from the birth of Rama to his triumph over Ravana. Such is the scope of the Ramayana story. This is where we spend all night, playing our drums, chanting the text and expanding upon its meanings, manipulating the puppets, even sleeping and resting while some of us perform, so that the story may go on uninterrupted. The story of our play is among the most ancient and sacred of Hindu epics. My ancestors have written the poetic verses of the puppet play and left them on palm leaf texts. Here, on leaf after leaf, are the timeless words of the 9th century poet Kampan, whose version of the Ramayana is one of the great works of Tamil literature in South India. Kampan's Ramayana contains over 12,000 verses of which more than 2,500 are used in the shadow play. All these must be memorized by heart, along with their explanations and various meanings. The training of a pullabar, a master of Topaba Kuthu, requires the commitment of a lifetime. I began learning as a child. My first and most important teacher was my father, Lakshman Pulavar. He was very well known and respected as a scholar of Sanskrit and mythology. Under his watchful eyes, my training began at the age of seven. Every day, I would rise at four in the morning and recite poems from the texts before him. Only when I could repeat what I had already learned would he teach me new verses. Father died when I was only 17. In one moment, I had lost father, teacher, and mentor. Being the eldest son, I now had to support my entire family. But I also had to find the strength to continue my learning. I sought out the most learned scholars and teachers I could and apprenticed myself to them. As my cattle would graze in the fields around me, I sat in these pastures with the texts, memorizing the passages one by one. Today, I carry on this tradition as I teach my three sons everything I know. Learning is a sacred act. You bathe, apply a paste of sandalwood on your forehead, and recite your prayers. Then, cleansed in body and mind, you are ready to receive knowledge. 
நேமியோ குலிசியோ நடும் கணிச்சியோ மை எல்டஸ்ட் இஸ் ராமச்சந்திரன் He will be the leader of our troop after me. Next is Vishwanathan. The youngest is Lakshman. Even as children, Father would gather all of us at 6 a.m. to recite the text. He is very strict about this. When we were to step out of the house, there were rules about playing with other children. All the children around us would be playing, but we would be sitting at home with Father. At the time, we did it because we were afraid of him, nothing else. When I began performing with him, I made mistakes. When I did that, I got a spanking from father when we were alone and he made me correct it. Then we would continue with the play. When I teach, I have only one aim, to get my students to be the best. Since we are all family, if any one of us makes a mistake, Father always corrects it later, not in front of everyone else. And because we perform together as a family, it has helped to bring harmony into the performance. When he starts the kuthu, he has no other concern about tiredness, hunger or sleep. He is ready to teach anybody who approaches him for training. For eight months out of the year, especially when the monsoon rains sweep through Kerala, no performances are held. The puppeteers must find other sources of income. It is also the time to repair old puppets and make new ones following the patterns of the old figures. We buy buffalo skin from the butchers in the market. At one time, deer skin was used for puppets. But since that has now become illegal, buffalo skin is used instead. It is thoroughly clean, stretched, dried and scraped until it is smooth. Outlines of figures are etched onto it 
and small perforations cut with chisels allow the light to shine through the patterns. Finally, vegetable colors extracted from trees and roots are added to give the puppets a finished look. This is how a piece of leather becomes images of gods, demons, apes and humans. The hero of the Ramayana story is Rama. He was born to restore dharma and destroy evil. He is protector, warrior and god. A single arrow fired from his bow annihilates entire armies. It is said to take the name of Rama is itself an act of virtue. As the mouth opens to say Ra, the sins are expelled. Fearing their re entrance, the mouth closes to say. Ma. Rama's wife is Sita. She represents an ideal of womanhood. Here, she is depicted sitting in a hut, surrounded by 14 parrots in mourning. One for each year she must spend in forced exile with Rama in the forest. Rama is opposed by Ravana, the ten-headed demon king of Lanka. Although immensely powerful and learned, Ravana violates Dharma in being driven by desire for Sita. According to the conventions of the screen, the left side represents Dharma, and on the right is its antithesis, the demon world. In this episode, Ravana sends his uncle Maricha to entice Rama away from the hut by assuming the form of a beautiful golden deer. Sita is enchanted by the deer and insists Rama capture and bring him to her. But the deer prances deeper and deeper into the forest, leading Rama in pursuit. Ravana seizes the moment. Using his magic, he transforms himself into a hermit seeking alms and approaches Sita's hut. Failing to tempt her into leaving Rama, he reveals his true form, but is unable to touch her, for she is protected by the fire of her chastity So, he scoops the very earth from under the hut and abducts Sita in his air chariot, setting into motion the pivotal dramatic conflict of the story. The giant bird Jatayu, seeing Sita's plight, makes a valiant attempt to stop Ravana's chariot. Such is the call of Dharma, that even beasts and creatures of the forest 
are willing to fight to the death in its defense. And so, a terrible war must be fought to bring Sita back and destroy Ravana. For a complete set of characters, 150 puppets are required. The Ramayana story contains a tremendous number of events, characters and places. Heaven, earth, the netherworld, forests, palaces, cities, mountains, oceans, all come and go. It would be very difficult to try to show all these with actors, but in shadows, everything can be made visible. Images can appear and vanish in an instant. It is impossible to summarize everything the Ramayana says and means. It presents ideals of what relationships should be like within a family. Father and son, husband and wife. I have, in various times, thought about these concepts and I try to live by them. And they my wife's name is Gomadi. We have been married more than 40 years. I'm thankful for the respect she has given me. Both of Krishnan Kuti's daughters are married and live in other villages. All three sons, their wives and children, still live with him at their ancestral home. But tradition does not permit women to be performers. So, it is up to Krishnan Kuti's sons alone to keep the art alive after him. The sons will also inherit the land that has been a vital means of sustenance for the family. Everything is contained in the earth. No life can exist without it. Farming allows me to live on this earth. Shadow puppetry will allow me to enter into heaven. This is my belief. <laughs> Lakshman plays a major role in cultivating and harvesting the rice fields owned by the family. There is no connection between farming and shadow puppetry. When the performance season is over, there is nothing much to do other than farming. I like to work with my hands in the fields. Sometimes it is very difficult, as in the rainy season and in the extreme summer. But it must be done. While father is still alive, I would like to learn more while still working in the fields. I am already 30 years old. It would be very hard to find a job now. 
So I plan to live with shadow puppetry and farming. When I am in the fields, my only thought is to finish the job as soon as possible so that I can get back to the house. As a sign of changing times, Vishwanathan also has another existence during the day. I am the local postmaster of our village. This job has been very important for me to support my family. Without it, it would be difficult to survive on the small earnings we get from shadow puppetry. This way, I can work at the post office from 9 to 1 during the day and still perform in the theaters at night. At the Kulankara Temple Theater in Ejapal, the play has been going on for nearly two weeks. It is now 3 a.m. of the morning, on which the fiercest battles of the war are to be fought. Indrajit, Ravana's son, will be killed by Rama's brother, Lakshman. The climax of the episode builds over the entire night as Krishnan Kuti leads the ensemble, expanding upon each event, each poetic metaphor, in a virtuoso feat of oral recitation. Mighty weapons fly and clash in mid-air. The puppeteers throw telly, an inflammable powder made from the sap of a tree. It ignites over the lamps, highlighting each weapon. Finally, Indrajit meets his match as he is beheaded by an arrow. His soul finds release as a prayer to Shiva brings the night's episode to a close. Outside the theater, the town sleeps. Not a single human soul is in attendance. But the puppeteers have kept their marathon vigil, performing in the belief that the goddess Bhadrakali is their invisible witness. Tolpavakuthu is a ritual offering to the goddess. We perform for her, even when no one else is watching. This is why a human audience is not essential to the performance of the shadow play. Still, in the old days, audiences used to come and sit and watch all night with devotion. During those days, there weren't even bus services. People had to walk eight to ten miles to watch the play. Such people are now rare. 
I have been coming to the shadow play at our temple ever since I was three or four years old. My mother first brought me there, and I became very interested. I couldn't stay home and sleep. I had to watch this. I like the epic stories, the poems. I like all this very much. Balin Nair is one of the sponsors of the shadow play at his local temple. Our family has a tradition of sponsoring one night of the play, the episode of Killing of Ravana, every year. It is said that this is very auspicious and brings good fortune to the family. But audiences for the shadow play are now disappearing. It requires great patience to see it. You have to stay till morning and understand the whole thing. Now people don't have that kind of patience. They just come and go. They will stay for other variety entertainment like magic shows, but leave before the shadow play begins. They have only a few hours to spare. The shadow play now has to compete with many other events held as part of the festival. I am the secretary of the temple committee. A few years ago, we had to move the shadow theater back into the fields, further away from the temple, to make more room for the crowds on the last day of the festival. Preparations for the festival are beginning to surround the puppet theater. <laughs> 4 a.m. the next morning, the story cycle moves towards its conclusion. Rama and Ravana face off in the final battle of the Ramayana. Kudakaran, the clown, makes a playful appearance, an umbrella holder in Ravana's court. He will offer false advice, and with his verbal wit and antics, provide comic relief from the gravity of the conflict. His presence connects the here and now of our own time with the mythic world of the story. Characters such as Kudakaran are not found in Kampan's text. They are unique to the shadow play. As the battle begins, the puppet figures swirl around the screen in a war dance played on earth, in the netherworld and in the skies. They exchange immensely powerful weapons until Ravana is completely exhausted. Rama then prays to Aditya, the sun god, and fires his ultimate weapon. It splits Ravana's chest, dislodging the pot of nectar which has made him immortal. Now, Ravana can be beheaded. Dharma has triumphed. Rama will return from exile and be restored to the throne. Later that same day, the conclusion of the temple festival unfolds in the grounds outside. The puppeteers have long left the theater, moving back to their village, preparing for the next cycle of the play at other temples. Their play has been performed as a ritual prayer that will shower blessings upon those who have sponsored the play and brought the benevolence of the goddess upon the entire community. As the day wears on, the shadow theater is immersed in a sea of pageantry, barely visible in the crowds, as if overwhelmed by the tide of changing time. Thank <laughs> you.
Krishnan Kuti faces great challenges to the very survival of his art. Not only that, as he grows older, his failing health requires him to spend less and less time performing in the puppet theatre. One of the important tasks the Pulavar must undertake is to ensure that the old texts are preserved. Father has really suffered because he has worked hard. That is why he is in the position he is now. Everyone values him here. He gets up very early, at four, and studies even now. He wouldn't have a minute to spare for rest. He gets angry sometimes. He wants us to study, that's why he gets angry. But, like father, if we try to impart this knowledge to our kids, no, I don't think anyone will learn this like we did. We cannot force them to. In olden days, a lot of people came forward to learn this with devotion. But not now. Learning was a lifelong process. Now? It is not important. The problem is, shadow puppetry is seasonal. People ask, what will we do after the summer for a living? People think they can get more money by doing daily labor work and in the evenings they can go to sleep. They say that to do puppetry you have to forgo your sleep during the night. It is not good for health and the income is meager. My son sits with father and father sings him the songs. We can tell him this is our tradition and we need to keep it up. But we cannot make him learn this like we learned from father. Fear does not work these days. <laughs> Ours is a traditional art form. We have to keep the essence of it without modifying it. TV, cinema, all these media have limits. Only while watching them is it entertainment for a few hours. But Tolpava Kuthu has more. Movies have originated from this. It has a spiritual and epic side to it. In the old texts, it is written. Here, one can see everything happening in the world. There is nothing in the world which is not here. I want to see all people living happily, having a good life. That is my prayer. Water has existed from the beginnings of the universe. It gives life, cleanses, and purifies all that it touches. I have no regrets in life. Whatever I desire, with God's grace, it has happened. My sons will keep the tradition alive. This art will never die. That is my hope.
And so, the last of the Pullivers pays homage to the fire of the gods. It has lit the lamps of his theater, brought shadows to life. Whether there will be others after him to bring it back, only time will tell. For in the end, it remains borrowed fire, which must be returned from whence it came. Swami Saranayam Swami Saranayam Swami Saranayam Ayya Ayya Sabari Girishwara Sachidananda Rupa Tunakkane Ayya Ayya Sabari Girishwara Sachidananda Rupa Tunakkane Ayya Ayya Sabari Ayya, ayya, sabari. 